Years ago, a priest friend taught me one of those life lessons you never forget and always treasure. He had been working in a parish for several years, but more and more in his prayer he felt called to be a prison chaplain. In his visits to parishioners who had been incarcerated, his heart went out to these human beings, especially since often his visit had to be conducted over closed circuit TV with no true human contact. The following year, his bishop released him to work as a chaplain to the local jailhouses and the large state prison located in his area. His training for this ministry took almost that entire first year. Much of the schooling was bureaucratic, protocols, chain of command, and record keeping. But one part of the training changed him forever and was the lesson he shared with me. At the end of the coursework and training, all who were to work on a daily basis in this prison, even the chaplains, had to be imprisoned for five days and five nights. The guards took from my priest friend anything that was personal, all his clothing and even the St. Michael medal from around his neck. In return, they gave him a prison jumpsuit and sandals, and with an armful of bedding, led him to an empty cell in an unused wing of the medium security building. He and the entire group of new employees, also imprisoned, worked in the prison workshops, ate with and used the same facilities as the general population of the medium security jail. His description of those five days was riveting and heartbreaking. All the little privacies adults take for granted were gone. Everything was public. When not in the shops, there was nothing to do. They did not have library privileges. And even though he was not a felon, he could feel the defeat of living in that setting, knowing that the larger community held you in no esteem, knowing that you were, and to varying degrees, would always be an outcast. He walked out of that prison after five days thrilled to be free again, more convinced than ever of the ministry he was about to begin and wondering, how do human beings survive that? The next time we got together at a convention we were both attending, it was immediately apparent that he had changed. And when he described day by day the details of his experience, it was clear he had discovered the difficulty and the importance of the corporal work of mercy to visit the imprisoned. This corporal work really highlights the power of mercy, the compassionate, even protective care of each individual, especially those most in need. But it also is one of the corporal works that challenges us. It begins with our attitudes. That was where he began to teach me, causing me to admit that some of my own attitudes about the imprisoned were often fearful and anything but merciful. He taught me that on those occasions when I visited the imprisoned, that the visit could not be reluctant or grudging, but instead bold with the mission of discovering and holding up what was good in the prisoner, helping to lift a little bit of the defeat. He embarrassed me by getting me to admit that I had rarely, or only in a general way, prayed for the imprisoned. The rate of incarceration in the United States is one of the highest in the world, and yet the imprisoned can still be invisible, hidden even from our prayers. It is with good reason that when Pope Francis visits countries, he always visits their prisons to remind us of the human beings living there. Now, having shared a lesson taught to me by my priest friend years ago, I hope you find yourself examining your attitudes and your prayers. And if the occasion presents itself when you actually have to visit someone imprisoned, make sure you visit them with mercy.